there, my friend. Welcome back. It's Dr. Anthony Balduzzi from the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project. In today's podcast, we're going to be talking all about fasting, the strategic practice of periodically taking a break from eating and all of the amazing health benefits that happen through your brain, through your fat burning, through your prevention of all sorts of different kinds of diseases. We're going to get into some of the science of fasting, as well as the practical applications for busy people like you and me who have work, family, life responsibilities, but we still want to live healthier. And I know that fasting is one of the key tools that we can use to be healthier. So I'm super excited to talk to you about this. And the way we're going to frame this conversation is the way that I personally understood fasting and got introduced to it around 10, 15 years ago. And that is through the lens of evolutionary psychology. Because when it comes to human health, one of the greatest ways to understand what we should be doing in terms of the foods we ingest, the kinds of practices and movement with our body, is to look at where these body machines came from. What did our ancient ancestors do? What were the kind of stresses in the environment that our bodies had to learn to cope and deal with? And one of the main stresses of our ancient ancestors was the fact that we didn't always have constant food access like we do today. Today, we live in a culture where you can get three square meals per day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and this is just kind of ingrained in our culture. But imagine what it might have been like a couple hundred thousand years ago or something like this, where a lot of species, a lot of animals didn't have constant food access. We had periods where maybe we found a patch of berries or maybe there was an animal that was killed and we had lots of feeding, but there was also times when we didn't have food. There was a fasting period. And to survive and cope during these fasting times, our bodies develop these innate, amazingly powerful health activation systems when we fast. When we didn't have constant food access, here's a little highlight, and we're going to get into some of the science of each of these benefits. This is the stuff that happens when we have an extended period without eating. One thing that happens is our body increases fat burning quite dramatically because we need to liberate energy stored in our bodies through fat cells and use that and burn that for energy when we're not getting constant food intake. As we're burning fat from stored fat during fasting, our insulin levels, insulin being this hormone that is secreted when we eat food, for example, carbohydrates in particular, insulin's job is to shuttle nutrients from foods we eat into our cells. Well, when we're not eating, insulin levels go very low. And insulin has a relationship with a hormone called growth hormone. They're like on a seesaw relationship. So as insulin drops, growth hormone rises. So when you fast, they've shown this through research studies. If you do like a 48 hour to 72 hour fast, and this is one type of intermittent fasting, we'll get into the practical different types in just a second, growth hormone can increase by five fold above baseline, a five times increase in growth hormone through fasting. And the benefit of that, of course, is growth hormone burns fat. It rejuvenates your tissues. It has anti-aging benefits. It's absolutely amazing. So your body almost has this internal pharmacy of increasing growth hormone that's activated by fasting. But it's not just like a physical body structure thing. It, fasting also affects your mind. As people start to practice intermittent fasting, alternate day fasting, longer fast, we're going to talk about all the specific types in just a second. One of the most amazing benefits that attracted me to this, especially as I was building the Fit Father Project and Fit Mother Project in the early years, is that it actually causes your brain to build new neurons and improves the clarity of your thinking. So normally, the model that we think about in terms of brain health is that um, as we're young and babies are developing, the brain is expanding massively into this network of neurons. And as we start to develop a little bit more, those neurons get pruned down and then we kind of have the, the brain cells and the neurons and it's just being affected by our daily life. And as we get older and cells start to die off, we accumulate damage through lifestyle and through injuries or whatever, that the brain it gets you know, slower and we have cognitive decline. This is what happens to many people. We see that there is Alzheimer's, dementia, you know, Parkinson's, neurodegenerative conditions that affect a lot of people. And one of the most amazing things about fasting is that research has actually shown that this could be a therapeutic intervention to improve brain health. Because when we fast, our neurons actually increase something called BDNF, which stands for brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And this is a little signaling molecule in the brain that tells your brain to build new neurons. So it actually regenerates the brain. And again, through an evolutionary perspective, looking at that lens of where the human species come from, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's like, we're not having constant food intake. There is a benefit for our bodies to get a little more cognitively sharper so we can go and, and, and think clearly and solve the problem of like, where do we find food? And regardless of why we have this, we just have this internal machinery. It's built in. And I want to get into a little more of the philosophy before we get into the different types of fasting that we incorporate into our Fit Father and Fit Mother programs and some practical tips from this podcast that you can take away and apply into your own life. 
One of the other meta philosophical principles around fasting is that everything in nature, all systems need to maintain a balance. There's this idea of the yin and the yang, you know, the hot and the cold, the summer and the winter. Natural systems are balanced by oppositional forces. And when it comes to our bodies, we have that too. And part of the main yin yang systems that is really out of whack in today's society is the fed and fasted state. So when we're feeding, when we're eating, we're giving our bodies nutrients, we're giving proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and our body is, is, is getting all this ingestion of these calories and releases this whole slew of hormones, insulin in particular, that's helping shuttle all this stuff into our bodies. And that's great because we're able to get nutrients from our foods and store it into our bodies. That's a building up process. Now, the problem is when we're constantly doing that without enough expenditure of activity and we're doing too much of that, what happens? Well, we accumulate body fat. We're in a too fed state. Too much feeding makes the body expand because we're storing this extra calories. But the other side that we're really missing in the philosophy of today's approach to nutrition is the fact that our bodies actually like and thrive in times when we're fasted for a period of time. For all the benefits I talked to you about, but one more I want to share that I think is really profound is every time we're eating and we're processing these nutrients inside each one of your trillions of cells, they're doing this complex metabolic processes where they're being very active. And in the process of doing all their activity, cells build up cellular junk. There's just like byproducts of metabolism in all of our cells. And when we fast and we give a break from that metabolic activity that happens in all these cells, our bodies actually get the chance to effectively take out the cellular garbage. There is a scientific term called autophagy or autolysis. And basically this means is a cellular detoxification where we're able to break down proteins, we're able to reduce inflammation. All this stuff happens during fasting. But the problem is if we're in a constantly fed state, insulin's always surging, we're always getting calories, our body doesn't get a chance to take out the garbage. Imagine your body's like a restaurant, right? And the restaurant's constantly cranking out food and there's lots of food. And as we're making food, there's buildup of waste. And if we never get a chance to like pause for a second and take out the waste garbage, we just build that stuff up and it eventually junks up the system. And this is truly what's happening for a lot of people. A lot of the diseases that are affecting us today in Western countries are diseases of excess. Diabetes, for a large part, type 2 diabetes is a disease of excess. We're throwing lots of sugars at the system, right? Insulin's being overtaxed. Our cells become resistant to insulin. Heart disease, largely associated with we're eating a lot of inflammatory foods. Our body's creating inflammation and we're laying down plaques in our arteries. Obviously, there's these are multifaceted issues. It's not quite just this simple, but we do need a period of time where we're not just in this excess building up state where our bodies are able to relax, detoxify naturally, which happens automatically, but it really happens in an accelerated way when we fast. Okay. Fasting. What we basically covered up to this point, evolutionarily based affects pretty much every organ system in your body, has its benefits to brain health, to weight loss, to growth hormone, to reducing inflammation. In fact, there's a lot of research studies that take overweight people, they put them on different fasting protocols, their inflammatory markers go down immediately within basically one month, their cholesterol levels improve, their triglyceride levels improve, like all this is amazing. And one of my favorite things about fasting is it is free. Unlike a lot of other things, you have to go do stuff or buy stuff or other things. This is just something naturally our bodies can do. So it's like an inborn superpower that I want more people to take advantage of. Let's talk about how you might apply fasting into your life. We do this in all of our fit father and fit mother programs. In the first 30 days of our fit father and fit mother programs, we don't start with fasting, but what we do is give you an idea of some different meal timing setups, meal schedule setups, like when you're eating your base meals of the day. And so some people have breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. So maybe breakfast is sometime around seven, lunch is sometime around noon, a snack sometime around three, dinner around six. That's one potential setup. Another setup that is potential for a lot of people is doing some daily intermittent fasting where we skip that first meal of the day and we shift it back. So you wake up, you rehydrate, you go throughout your day. Maybe you have some tea, some black coffee, but you're not eating food in the morning. And that first meal come, might come at like 10, 30, 11, noon, whatever time that is. You still likely have a snack or something at three. You have dinner at six. So in that instance, we've actually extended the fasting window. The fasting window is starting after dinner. So we've had dinner at six. And then we kind of begin this overnight fast. And we fast until the next day at like 10 or 11. This is a form of intermittent fasting every single day. So we're doing a fasting window of let's just say 12, 14, 16 hours. 
And you can push it. Some people do only one meal a day and may push the fasting window longer. The reason I'm bringing this up is there's benefit to doing daily intermittent fasting, which basically means there's a period of time in the morning where you push back your meals. Now, what I personally have done, and I've tried so many different protocols, the number one thing is to find the one that works for you. But I think at the very least, if you are a breakfast person and you don't want to try skipping breakfast, which you totally don't have to, is to have dinner a little bit earlier. So let's say you had dinner around 536 and after dinner, you're done eating for the day. You brush your teeth, you drink some tea, and you, you start your fasting window. So by the time that 6 a.m. rolls around the next day, and maybe you are a breakfast at 6 a.m. kind of person, you already have 12 hours of effectively fasting under your belt. And the benefits of fasting from the research kick in as early as 12 hours. So if you even start to just like compress your eating window a little bit, eat dinner a little bit earlier, you get lowered infl inflammatory effects from that kind of fasting. And of course, you can also push back that first meal and extend that fasting window. Daily intermittent fasting is good. But in my opinion, these real benefits of fasting get more profound, and I think the research also supports this, as the fast gets a little bit longer. So here's what we recommend in our programs. And if, if you're one of our members, you know the structure. If you're someone who wants to join us, there's going to be links in the description of this podcast as well. And we have a promo code podcast 15, where you can get 15% off our fit father, fit mother core programs to get started with us. We want you to start whatever your daily rhythm is. Your daily nutrition structure is the one that fits your schedule best. Number one. And then after 30 days of really getting that established, we move into phase two of our program. And in phase two, we introduce a 24 hour fast once a week. And now 24 hour fast might seem like, man, like that seems like hard and scary, but here's basically what it is. Imagine you have dinner tonight and then you just don't eat anything until dinner tomorrow. You just wake up your dinner tonight. You wake up the next day and you drink water, you drink teas, you can drink some coffee, whatever. And you just skip breakfast and lunch and you go to dinner. This would be a dinner to dinner, 24 hour fast. This is one of the most therapeutic and effective things you can do for your health and your weight loss. From a weight loss perspective, merely looking at the calories and the math of this, you're going to be burning 1,500, 2,000, maybe more calories. And just from one day of fasting, as long as you have like a, a fairly clean and healthy dinner as you break your fast, you are, you've created a massive calorie deficit in one day. And there's a lot of research that uses this protocol. They call it alternate day fasting, where you eat normal one day, and then the next day you do a 24-hour fast. And you eat normal for one to two days, and you do a 24-hour fast. Alternate day fasting works just as well as continuous calorie restriction for weight loss. So there's some math behind this. But what we like to do is establish that proper meal timing that works for you first. And that's a good, healthy meal plan. And then on top of that, we start to introduce once a week, 24 hour dinner to dinner fast. I like to do mine uh, in many different days, sometimes on days when I'm very busy, and I don't want to have to think about what I'm eating for breakfast or packing a lunch or anything like this, I can just do a 24 hour fast during some of your busiest days. And I'll, a lot of our program members do that. You could do it on the weekend. A lot of people tie these with some of their spiritual practices and they fast for those reasons. You know, there's a great tradition. If you look at basically all the great spiritual traditions, they have fasting incorporated for this cleansing purpose. Because I think as you start to fast, you'll notice that one of the things that's like most addictive about it is you feel light, clean, clear, and energized. Light, clean, clear, and energized. Your body just feels good because this is another important thing to understand about our bodies is our bodies are constantly... Um, shifting around blood throughout the system because we have a set amount of blood that we're pumping in this heart circulatory system. And that blood needs to go carry nutrients, carry oxygen, nourish our organs, fuel our muscles in activity. But one of the biggest tug of war battles with blood is between our brain, which requires a ton of blood and ton of energy. Like this little organ here requires 20 to 30% of our daily energy. And our brain is in direct opposition to our GI tract. So you know what it's like when you have a big, heavy meal, you feel tired afterwards because a lot of that blood is shunted to the digestive tract to start work on breaking down this food. And as a byproduct, the brain doesn't have as much. So you yawn, you get a little more tired. What happens when you fast is you're not having all that digestive stress and a lot of that blood flow running to your GI tract. So you feel like you have more energy and more mental clarity. This is just how the body system works. So many benefits to this stuff. So the alternate day or the 24 hour fasting once or once a week is great. For some of our program members who have lost close to 200 pounds, sometimes they even like it so much they do it twice a week. They're having dinner every single day, but they're just kind of skipping some meals. And at first, when you start fasting, it might feel a little challenging. So what I recommend is maybe like start small, just start shifting your dinner a little earlier, maybe skip breakfast once in a while and start to build yourself up. These are what I would say is just like regular 
every single week cleaning your body up fast. Like imagine if you really gave your body one day a week to just take out the cellular garbage. You don't have to worry about food. You get all these hormonal health benefits. It helps you lose weight and stay lean. It's phenomenal. Now, fasting, there's a whole world of like longer fasts, and we can talk about that a little bit in this podcast, but we'll probably do a dedicated episode on this later. As you extend your fast, for example, to like 72 hours, so we're getting into a three-day fast, there is some amazing research from one of the great longevity scientists today, a guy named Walter Longo, who shows that your immune system receives tremendous benefit when you get into a longer fast. Your bone marrow starts to stimulate and you start to grow new white blood cells. And there's applications of this too. You, you also start to get some, some things that increase in your body like tumor necrosis factor, stuff that like actually can help fight cancers. A lot of this immune function kicks in with a three-day fast. So there's a lot of people that have talked about the benefits of doing non-caloric non fasting, which means you're just drinking fluids, but without calories. So they could be teas, waters, coffee, if that's your thing as well. You can have these things while you fast, but the longer you go um, into these like three-day fasts, you get immune system benefits too. So my personal philosophy on what I would say would be actually optimal is one, get your standard nutrition timing down. And if you need help with that, you want to get on a regular meal timing schedule setup. You want to dial in some of those core meals. You have like a daily rhythm with nutrition. My team and I would love to help you. We can help you in our programs. Links in the description. So one, you get your system down. Two, after you have rhythm and, and some habit momentum on that, you start to introduce a dinner to dinner fast once a week. And then three is once every quarter, once every 90 days, maybe you do a longer fast. You push it to 48 to 72 hours. You know, of course, this is all under doctor supervision. You need to make sure this is healthy for you. Check with your doctor, et cetera, et cetera. Just important caveat for me and my family, we do this because this is a deeper cleaning mechanism. And there is not stuff that you could do in terms of like pills you could take or powders that can activate this deep, deep health benefits as you can really get from extended fasting at least up to this point, it's like amazing how powerful these effects are. Like, is there a pill that can stimulate your immune system in a healthy way to like regenerate it as much as like 72 hour fasting? I don't know of it yet. Maybe in the, in the future with science, we'll do crazy gene therapies that can. But for now, what I do know for certain, and I want to share with you is that we have this inborn superpower in our body's natural, uh, baked in hardwiring that we can activate through these deeper fasts. So I, I think that's where we'll pause here. Fasting is, is a very deep topic. I think the main thing is like start playing around with it. Even if you're just getting dinner a little earlier, first meal a little bit later, it's very great. So something that's profound about fasting on the longevity front is what they find is when they put two groups of rodents or monkeys or even humans on diets and one has like lots of calories and overfed and another group is fasted that the fasting group lives longer and substantially longer. It's because fasting has built in anti-aging mechanisms. Fasting activates these longevity genes called sirtuins, these different genes like SIRT1, SIRT3. And we don't need to get into the science, just know that there's longevity benefits to fasting. And likely from what we know, the people who live the longest, these, these centenarians are eating calorie controlled diets. They're not overfeeding for sure, but I think they could even enhance their longevity even more by starting to do fasting. So my real intention with this conversation today is to get this on the top of your mind. If you're one of our program members, then you know we talk about fasting as one great health tool in your slew of different things you can do to live healthier. I want you to consider playing around with that. Read some more about the stuff. Listen to this podcast again. Let these benefits really sink in, and I think this will be an amazing power in your life, and you'll find a lot of liberation and true health effects from incorporating fasting. So I hope you enjoyed this, my friend. Uh, I'm super excited to continue publishing amazing episodes here on the Fit Father Project and the Fit Mother Project podcast. You know, my team and I, we're here to serve you and your family. I want to help you live healthier, longer, and stronger. I want to help you make this health stuff simple and sustainable. We can do that inside our podcast. You can check out our websites for our full programs. And I appreciate you tuning in and being here. And if you found this valuable, if you found this information, like, just thought provoking and, and, and awesome, share it with your friends and family. Be like, hey, man, this is something I checked out with fasting. Uh, I'd love for you to see this podcast episode. I want to spread this info because this is simple stuff that we can do. We can all start incorporating it today and it has profound benefits. Thanks for being here, my friend. I'll see you in our future episodes. I'll talk to you very soon.